Hello and welcome back to my channel GoGeeko. Today I will be talking about Informatica Data Engineering Integration or DEI. It used to be called Big Data Management which is BDM and I will be talking about what are the key differences with Power Center and IDQ. So let's get started. So here are some of the main components of DEI and BDM. So first of all DEI or BDM both are same. In future, the name may change, but the concept and how you work on this tool remains the same. It's basically the developer tool, which you will be working on, and I will show that shortly. If you know IDQ, then you know 90% of DEI already. In case you have not watched my IDQ videos, I would highly encourage to go and watch my IDQ playlist on YouTube GoGeeko channel. Also, if you know Power Center, then you know 80% of DEI already. So in case you don't know Power Center, you may want to go and learn Power Center from my YouTube channel also. But I would highly encourage that if you wanted to learn DEI, then go and learn IDQ. So these are some of the important DEI points. First of all, it's fast and easy development. Uh, Any one unit testing is very easy. And I have covered that as part of my IDQ videos also because the development wise is exactly same. Code is easy to maintain debug compared to Python or Java multi-line code. DEI tool covers almost 80% of use cases in the market. There are some limitations like sequence generator is not supported or you cannot develop multiple pipeline mapping in the same mapping as we can do in power center it doesn't support fixed width files you know there are workarounds there are easy workarounds which are suited more for dei tool so we need to get out from the power center mentality that these things used to work like that and why don't they work like that in dei dei has its own way of doing things so there are workarounds for all these it's not like it's, these are not supported. You can do that. Like for sequence generator, you can create a maplet and you can look up your sequence ID, wherever that ID is, and you can get the max of that ID and then you can just increment that by one. So that's just one way. You can do multiple ways of doing things in DEI. This is the most important concept about DEI. It's about computer execution engine. So what is computer execution engine? This is where you want to run your mappings. So your mapping runs somewhere, right? Where does it run? And whenever we talk about running, meaning compute or some machine or some server is involved. And that is what the execution engine is. Mostly in Power Center or IDQ, your mapping runs where IDQ or Power Center is installed. And that is also called native execution because your mapping logic is running on the same machine where it's installed that's why it's called native native execution so there are mainly two types of execution engine one is native execution of mappings or code happens where di is installed or where your idq or power center is installed that is native execution in cluster or distributed computing which is the second type of execution engine and that is where power of DEI or BDM tool comes into play what it really means is execution of mappings code happens on multiple nodes machines or worker machines those worker nodes can auto scale up and down based on the processing needs Think of that way, worker node, like you give them some work and they will do that work for you, no matter what it takes. It may take five machines or five servers or it may take 5,000 machines, doesn't matter. It will auto scale up and down based on the processing needs. Let's say for example, you are processing data today for let's say you have 1 billion rows and you only want 20 nodes to process that data. But tomorrow, due to whatever is the reason, you get 100 billion rows. Now, next day, you can define your cluster in a way that it will auto scale up to thousands machines or thousands nodes or thousand worker nodes so that you can still complete your execution within the given SLA. 
I just wanted to throw this picture out there. Native mode is usually like one machine or one server, or it could be a few machines like four or five. When you talk about cluster or distributed computing, you have hundreds or thousands of nodes of machines, or they call it worker nodes at your disposal in cluster mode. So look at that. So this, this is kind of a one machine, one machine, and then you have these data centers with many, many nodes and worker nodes, and you can scale up and down based on however many you want to use. Use. This is the key difference between DEI and IDQ. In IDQ or power center, mapping execution runs on native mode with power of usually one of few machines, as I said before. In DEI, mapping execution runs on cluster mode with power of usually thousands or hundreds of machines. And that is where the power of DEI is. It can auto scale up and down meaning if you need it then it will stand up it will use hundreds of cluster nodes or worker nodes and when you don't need them it won't use them so you won't be charged everything comes down to the cost if you go with power center your machine is always on your server is always on you're paying that 24 by 7 in case of DEI when your machine is not in use, when you're not executing your mapping on those machines, those can shut down and you're not charged. So you're only charged when you're actually running or using the compute of those worker nodes. When we talk about worker nodes, they are usually a cluster like a Databricks can create a cluster, Spark or EMR clusters, Hadoop clusters. Mostly I'm seeing the Databricks and EMR clusters with DEI nowadays. And this is how in Databricks you create a cluster. I just want to throw out that picture. Like this is a Databricks. Um, you go to cluster and you create a new cluster and it gives you all these options. Usually the admins or DevOps create these clusters. So you don't have that power. But I just wanted to highlight one important point. If you look at it, it's a worker type, meaning what kind of machine is that? This is the most important point. You can say minimum worker is two and maximum worker is eight in this case, but you can say maximum worker up to like thousand, two thousand. Usually I have seen in big data or in data warehousing use cases, around hundred worker nodes suffice your needs. But then it's just one of the common use case I'm talking about. People must be using thousand worker nodes or people may be using 10 worker nodes depending upon their use case but the power lies you have that ability to do that now let's jump into the DEI tool itself so this is the DEI tool and you can see it looks very similar to IDQ interface which is the developer interface and um, when I talk about power of DEI this is where it is like if you click outside anywhere, like here, here, but not on any of these uh, source target or expression, but just outside, then this window opens and you go to runtime, meaning runtime where you want this mapping to execute. You want it to execute as native mode, then you are only utilizing the power of one or two machines wherever the DEI is installed. But usually you would choose Databricks or Hadoop or some kind of a cluster which is nothing but a cluster of many, many worker nodes. And this is the connection to that Databricks cluster. If you remember, that's how you create the cluster. And this is the cluster you're giving in your DEI that, okay, go and execute this mapping logic. And your mapping can be very complex based on how much data you're using, how many transformations, and all that logic can be pushed down to that Databricks or Hadoop or a EMR cluster with multiple nodes. So that is one of the important points which I wanted to highlight. So there are two different types of connections in DEI. One is your cluster connection, which is here. For native mode, you don't need to give any connection because it already knows where DEI is installed. Like in Power Center on IDQ, you don't give any connection to where you want to execute your mapping. But in case of DEI, you have to, and usually you choose some kind of a cluster, either Hadoop or Databricks in order to perform or execute your mapping. The other connections, don't confuse this execution connection with the other connections. Other connections are your source connection, like 
like where this table is residing. So you may be connecting to some table. It could be a Redshift table. It could be a Databricks table itself because Databricks has database kind of a database also or it could be a file you're connecting to or it could be Teradata or Netiza or Oracle you can that is the connection which is here similarly that is a connection which is here so you have you still have your source and target and lookup connections to connect to the data but then you have this another connection which is the execution connection where your logic will be performed all right with this i just want to thank you all for watching my videos please subscribe to my channel thank you and goodbye